Okay, if you're watching this video, um, this video is going to be about upgrading uh, NetBeans after you have gone through the NetBeans 8.2 installation with the Java JDK uh, uh, 8.111, 111, something like that. After you've watched the previous video on the installation of NetBeans 8, uh, in this video, we're going to attempt to update uh, to NetBeans 12 with the OpenJDK 16. Um, the reason for all of this is, uh, the reason I was using the older NetBeans is because Oracle, uh, once they got a hold of Java, um, they sort of extracted or they just took out the the FX, Java FX, uh, package so it wasn't there for us to use to create uh, GUIs and uh, teaching uh, swing uh, is kind of uh, the old school way of doing things uh, it's really uh, Java FX is the way to go in the future but um, I had a hard time trying to get it to work with uh, any of the IDEs but I think I just found a way to get this to work um, with the latest version of NetBeans. So, um, I'm testing it with this video. Uh, if it's a, a success, then that means you will be watching this video. And uh, you might see a page with some of this information um, that I, or it may be in a different form or whatever, but uh, this, this is so I could remind myself what to do. So, and show you what to do. Um, we need to first download the latest OpenJDK. So I'm going to click on that. I don't need this tab open. Make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to grab the zip file for Windows 64 right here. Uh, if you're using a different um, OS, then I recommend you do what you need to do for that one. Uh, I'll click on that and let it download. Let's see, it's only going to take about 30 seconds. That's not too bad. Okay, so that OpenJDK is just going to come in a zip file. So I need to open up um, just uh, like my C drive. Uh, just open up a file explorer and go to Program Files and then Java. And this is where you'll see you'll have some some uh, JDKs and some JREs installed. Uh, we're going to put the contents of that zip file in this folder. So I'm going to open up that zip file, and it says JDK 16.01. I'm just going to copy out of the zip file, and then go back to the folder that I had open, which is the C program files Java, and just paste it right here. Um, are you sure? Yes, please continue. Okay, it shouldn't take a, well, it's probably going to take long to, okay, there we go. <laughs> thought it was going to take longer to extract it than it was to download it. So now we're adding uh, the JDK uh, for the open JDK uh, version 16 from Java, and this will have the uh, um, the Java FX uh, installed with it. Uh, and I'm going to pause the video until this thing finishes. Okay, so uh, that finished uh, zipping into my program files folder. And now uh, let's take a look at the next step. I need to Oh, add that path to the environmental variables. So what I'm talking about is not the path to Java, but you need to go into the JDK 16.0.1, and we're going to add the path to the lib and the bin, just to be safe. So notice I go into the lib folder, and I'm going to copy this path. Copy. And then I'm going to just click on the start menu and start typing ENV and it will come up with edit the system environmental variables. And then I want to click on where it says environmental environment variables. And this little thing will pop up. Now all we're going to do is add these two directories 
underneath the system variables we're going to click where it says path and then click uh, edit and then we're just going to click new in the edit environmental variable and then I'm going to paste the first path in there which is lib hit enter and then I'm just going to hit new again and then paste and I'm going to change that last part to bin b-i-n then hit enter there we go so we added the two paths to the JDK that we downloaded to our environmental variable perfect and we click OK OK and OK all right and then moving on we need to install the latest Apache NetBeans from Apache.org uh, and it should work uh, uh, we're gonna choose the JDK 16 for the projects when it prompts us so this link will bring you right to the 12.4 um, there might be a, uh, a newer one by the time you're watching this but I'm gonna include this link so you could uh, have the exact same version as me and let's see these are just uh, sites you just pick one that looks good to you it doesn't matter they're all the same file and this is going to download the Apache NetBeans uh, executable which is kinda large so I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video again while this downloads I probably should have said this at the beginning of this video rather than here halfway through it but I just remembered that if you're only taking CIT 130 and you do not plan on going into CIT 230 you do not have to go through these steps you can and that's fine because you can use this version uh, but you don't have to the uh, NetBeans 8 with the uh, update um, 8.11 whatever that is um, that will work just fine for CIT 130 uh, if you are going to CIT 230 in the fall um, then you definitely need to uh, watch and do this video you don't have to do it for the summer but you do have to do it uh, in the fall all right and for those of you who are installing this in the fall because I'm not going to redo this video just ignore that last part um, so now Apache NetBeans has downloaded so I'm gonna open it up uh, let's see okay um, we'll see that the installer pops up configure the installer let's see here I'm gonna hit customize just to see what it gives us here se JavaScript um, I don't need HTML5 and JavaScript for NetBeans. Uh, the PHP, um, oh, how much space does that save? That saves quite a lot of space. Oh, no, I'm, no, no, I'm gonna go ahead and leave them all selected because it looks like uh, there's some uh, dependencies there. I'm just gonna hit OK. Uh, next, I will accept these terms. No, I'm, I've never read them next so right here we're going we're going to install this into the NetBeans folder 12.4 and notice that it says that the JDK is JDK 16 that's the open JDK that we just downloaded that's an important thing to remember and that you want to leave it that way but uh, make sure that that is the JDK that's selected and if not you would want to hit browse and go to that directory and then I'm going to unselect this check for updates because that's always just annoying. All right, and I'm going to let it install here. I'll pause the video until it's done. Okay, my installation is finished. So I'm just going to click on finish here. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and I like to pin my uh, IDEs to the uh, start menu. So usually when you first install something, it appears under the recently added, but I like to right click and choose pin to start and then uh, probably move it around over here where the other IDEs are or something. I don't know. I'll put it right there. So I uh, remember I have to move some stuff around later. <laughs> All right. Anyways, we're going to open up Apache NetBeans. And then, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, it's finding that I already had a uh, profile from the previous NetBeans, which is still installed, and I'm just going to leave it there. And I'm just going to say yes, that way the, uh, the dark uh, theme that I have and my settings will all be the same. All right, come on, starting, starting, starting. 
All right, here we go. Now, uh, with the new NetBeans open, oh, it's still kind of opening, isn't it? There we go, yeah. Welcome to the NetBeans IDE plugin installer. Uh, NB Java C editing, uh, yeah. I don't know why it's saying this. I'm just gonna sit yes and accept the terms and install. Uh, looks like it's just for some of the plugins, support library, finish, okay. Um, turning on modules. It's taking a little time here. Let's see, okay, I can do file, new project. Now I'm going to show you where the, where the problem lies here. Um, when I choose uh, Java with Ant, and uh, I'm going to, uh, to uh, expand that little menu, and I look at Java FX right here, and I choose the Java FX application, and hit next. Uh, Yes, download and activate. Yes, we're going to have to, to do this. NBC Java Editing Support Library. That, that too. Download and activate. Java FX implementation for Windows. Next. Download. Downloading plugins. Installing. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Finish. And activating Java FX. Cool. All right, you can see right here, failed to automatically set up the JavaFX platform. Uh, and that's because it, it's using this uh, JDK 16 um, for the JavaFX. Now, um, I'm going to think I said something wrong in the, in the uh, beginning of this video, but uh, it's not part of the Open JDK. Uh, JavaFX itself uh, is, um, uh, but it's an open thing that we need to we don't need to download we're going to use the uh, previous version of the JDK that we were using for NetBeans uh, only for JavaFX applications and when we're going how we're going to make that happen is by clicking the uh, manage platforms button here now under here we need a 1.8 which is the uh, the version of uh, Java that has the JavaFX we need that uh, to show up here. So we're going to click Add Platform, uh, Java Standard Edition, uh, and yeah, just leave that selected at the top and hit Next. Now we have to navigate to that, uh, make sure Platform folder is selected, yep. We have to find that uh, version. So I'm going to go to Program Files and then Java right there, and then we want the JDK 1.811 and hit next. All right. And now it shows up and notice that the platform name is JDK 1.8. It's pointed to the JDK 1.8 uh, JavaFX zip file and there is a Java doc information. So now we click finish. And you can see that it added all the jars from JDK 1.8 for the JavaFX stuff that we uh, that we're going to be using there. And now we can just hit, well notice up here we have JDK 16 which is default and JDK 1.8 which is also available. I'm going to hit close. So now in this drop down you'll see that we have this JDK 1.8 and we can switch over to that. Uh, I want to show you something though that I'm just going to hit cancel and then I'm going to go to file, new project, Java FX, Java FX application. Next. Now, whenever we choose a Java FX application, it's automatically going to default to using the JDK 1.8. Uh, and that's what I've been trying to figure out for a year now. <laughs> Finally just made it happen. And I'm going to click Finish. And it creates a Java FX application for us. It's a generic one here. Uh, so we're, we're of course not into Java FX until we get to chapter 14, but uh, once we get there I like to use Java FX for our, the rest of the semester if I can. I'm going to go ahead and hit run just to make sure this is working. Uh, it's not working, so let's see. I'm going to hit cancel. And then uh, go check my notes there. That's why I made some notes. 
Let's see. Okay, use the Java plat. Add the platform manager. Uh, it will default. Uh, open Apache NetBeans and try the effects. I'm going to try something. It might be as simple as needing to restart NetBeans. Oops. And I'm going to open up NetBeans here again. Why did that class not be found? Let me think about that. Oh, it must be. I could have sworn uh, we had the path in there correctly, but NetBeans hadn't been restarted, so it didn't see it. So yeah, that, that's the only reason it wouldn't do that, in my opinion. Let's see. Like I said, this is an experimental video, and if you're watching it, well, then that means it was a, su a success. So. <laughs> and I click start. Oh, I see something's running now. We should see a hello world frame. There we go. Perfect. Say hello world. Oh yeah, and when you click the button, I bet you it goes to the output window. So I'm going to display the output window here and you can see that it said hello world and click on it again. Voila. And that is a simple Hello World program uh, using JavaFX. Now, um, now that I did get this to work, the reason that uh, we want to use the latest version of NetBeans with the OpenJDK is that we can do a lot of cool things like, of course, the JavaFX is using the uh, old version of FX, and even though NetBeans was last used 171 days ago. Whatever. I don't even know what that means. Um, uh, there are things like, if you look under services, we have uh, databases. We can connect to a MySQL database, and uh, there is um, a free one that I'm going to have uh, a link to for the Java 2 course uh, called XAMPP that we'll use to set up um, and talk to the MySQL server, and we'll do a lot of database stuff and uh, a lot of JavaFX stuff with it, servers, cloud, Docker, excellent. Um, all right, I'm going to call this video a success, and uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Let me know if you had any issues with this video, or if you followed along with me and it did not work for you. I'd like to hear about those issues. So.